Good morning, everybody. This morning, we're going to take you around and give you a look at the Sun Odyssey 410. Starting off at the transom, one we have no choice at the boat show, there's a logical place to start. You have a really nice bathing platform transom here. And as you can see, this one is actually electronically controlled. So you're not having to worry about the weight too much. I should imagine that's an option. So look on the website. Nice fold away bathing ladder. And then once your transom is up, it feels from where the corner seats are, it actually covers that gap across there for your security. And then you have extra safety lines that go all the way across. You have a locker here for your life raft. If your transom is closed and there's room for other bits and pieces, you can access it from the deck. Port side, um, you have your gas locker. There's a handy spot. Underneath there, there is actually a self-draining hole, so you're not having to worry about, you know, gas buildup and explosions and stuff. And then just underneath, you'll see you have access to your steering quadrants, autopilot, so everything's pretty easy to sort of get to. And then both port and starboard, it's nice once again on this boat too, that you see you've got in integrated um, blocks for your feet for while you're on the helm. And then be being that it's twin helm, you've got your emergency helm access on both. This is more of the comfort package. So you've got a really nice cockpit, central cockpit table. Got your electronic buttons for of hydraulic, electric. So you've got your up and down buttons here, ambience lighting, um, and your autopilot is central, which is quite handy. You imagine you're sailing and your partner's making a cup of tea or whatever. It's really quite nice to be able to get to your main sheets. Just do your tack go through with the autopilot and it leaves you pretty much free to do all your sail handling. So right hand side, uh, starboard side, it's nice to see that they've managed to keep the corner seats for while you're sailing. You have your throttle controls here. Once again, Raymarine chart plotter. And then just up above, you have your bow thruster and anchor windlass controls. I'm going to give you a look forward from the seat on the helm. So, you know, I know it's easy at the indoor show, but you have plenty of a really good line of sight forward and access, direct access from where I'm sitting. So nicely in the corner and I've got my Harken 46 self tailing winch right here. So whether you have it electric or manual is entirely up to you and your bank of clutches are just there. So you're not having to lean anywhere to get to where you want to be. And then over on the port helm, wind instruments, repeaters, uh, myself, I would probably have a second autopilot or something like that. So then at least your wind instruments can be over here. You can have one if you're being a little bit lazy. Um, and then once again, another Harken 46 self tailing winch and your bank of clutches there. Before we finish off the cockpit, going to go forward. And once again, it's that seamless walk through which Jano is becoming famous for so there's nothing to trip over it's just really good it's one of their USPs and it makes a massive difference there's a shortage of grab handles here but of normally you would have a spray hood and so there'd be a, a grab handle or two on the spray hood. So coming forward, it's not too much of an issue. And then you'll see as we go around, you've got all your um, sheet line management systems running through and along. So imagine what we saw on the Sun Odyssey 350. You have access to pontoon or marina walls or whatever, starboard and port. And once again, this is an outboard shrouds, rigging is outboard shrouds. And over the saloon area, you have two forward facing opening flush hatches. It's non-slip surface. 
I should imagine there's an option if you want it in teak or flexi teak, something you'd have to speak to your dealer about and you know have a really good look. And then all the way forward, you have your um, bow sprit with a single barrel stainless steel roller. And there is a point for a Spinnaker Code D or a Jenica forward. This one actually hasn't, by the looks of it, they haven't finished doing the sail plan on this. It's just a showboat. So you could have it set up with Genoa or self-tacking jib. We saw your windlass and then in the forward locker, you would have your electronic controls for your anchor windlass and so on. Chain forward. So there'd be a bit of space um, for some fenders. We are doing a factory tour um, with a blow up fender company. So sometime keep an eye out for that. It's quite nice to see stainless steel. It's all good. And then come aft quickly. Okay, back in the cockpit. I actually quite like this upgraded option. Nice big compass, somewhere to put your drinks, beers, cup of tea, cans of Coke, whatever. And here is your Yanmar start stop button. It's actually quite a cool place to have it. And then up on the table, nice spot for bottles. And then we'll come all the way forward on the table and then a big storage area here and you can have it as a cool box and so on. So really handy. Really handy cockpit table. It'll give you a bit of a pan out. Under the starboard and port side benches, you have a lazarette. So we'll open one locker, however you want to call it, because I know there'll be arguments in the comments. So there's some storage space in here, you know, fire extinguisher, bucket, uh, mooring lines, you know, all the sort of junk that we seem to collect and accumulate on a, on a boat. And then once again, another one on the starboard side. So, you know, it's somewhere else to store more of your junk. Forward by your companion way, you have two Harken self-tailing 40 winches, your banks of clutches for however you've set up your um, reefing lines and so on. Um, I'm pretty sure the 410 comes with inline reefing. They have optioned this out, which is definitely a bonus on the port side. So you have two speed electric winch and what would be really good do you have a wheel block or something on here if you wanted to? I know you've got the main winch, but if you have something already on here, you can just bring a line to it straight across to your electric winch and away you go. Party time. There are a couple of configurations for this boat. I'll give you a pano while I'm up here at the companion way. We'll see if we can get some images to come up on the screen for you. But I actually like the way this one's been set out um, for a 40 foot boat. So instead of before with the older versions, you would have had a single huge inline galley all the way along there or longitude galley if you want to call it or the option of just having a small l-shaped galley there i think they've realized that sort of owners that want this boat are going to go a little bit further they're going to go away for a couple of weeks and they want the comfort they want the space because they want to be able to invite their friends or have the kids and the grandkids over um, so they need different things and jano have taken that on board I like, we're going to start over on the port side. I'm going to do the aft cabin first and then we'll do get into this nav area. So, um, the aft port cabin, you have your main breakers and quite a low down double bunk, which is really cool. You have access to services over there and a nice port light window with privacy blinds. Opening hatch here, 
and an opening hatch here if there's an option to not have an outdoor lazarette it might be you know it's up to you um the other one is shallower on the other side so the cabin will be bigger and then you have a really nice window for light coming into um, the cabin as well and this can probably be option to be an opening hatch and you have another opening hatch here to give you an idea of head height you know, if you're getting changed in and putting clothes on or whatever, or just getting into bed, there's plenty of room in this cabin. And then you have some large hanging lockers with shelves. It's quite good, actually, how they've kept, instead of having two doors, so you have one door for shelves and one door for hanging, they've actually popped your shelves inside. You've just got one opening. It's all about space saving and saving a bit of weight. And then here you have access to your manic um, mechanical spot right nav desk work table this really is a it's a, a nav area but it's a, an office um, and i really like it you know they're not pretending it's anything else there is some storage under the seat and you have vents for air conditioning or hot air heating nice leather covered top it's just yeah you know and if you had rolled up charts or other bits and pieces or you know it's i think they've just done a really nice job i think jano have upped their game the last couple of years they've really sort of upped their game um access to electrical panel behind and obviously this drops down so if I can find that, haha, <laughs> they set it up so we can't do it at the show. Anyway, that will obviously hinge down so you can get to the wiring for your DC. And this is for checking on your battery levels, water tank levels, diesel levels, and your um, Raymarine VHF and, you know, clock barometer. I know some people might think it's old fashioned, but it's still nice to see this gear from time to time on boats. There's some handy cubbies for mobile phones. So I really like this area. It's sociable. You could be here working on your laptop while, you know, your friends or your kids are over there. It's really sociable. Or you're on doing a little bit of a passage. You're on watch. You can just pop your head up out through the companionway or through this cabin window. It's just nice. You know, well done, Jano. Got some shelves just here. And really big fiddles. Uh, it help if I actually pointed the camera at it. So really big fiddles at this galley island. Before we go into the galley and the saloon, I shall come over to the starboard cabin. So pretty much mirrors the port side cabin. So you have a nice double reading light and um, I'm about to lose my microphones, guys. Okay, so give me a minute. I think on the port side cabin is the reading lights have USB charging on them, have some nice drop down cupboards there. There is also a mains plug, I'll block out the light. There's a, a mains plug and USB charging over there. So, pretty good stuff. Behind the door, you have access to your mechanical department. And once again, you have another one of those lockers here. And just out from that cabin, you have your heads. So this one's actually been set up with an electric flush. Um, you can have it manual if you wish, save yourself a few quid. But you know, if you can have the upgrade. And then a separate shower, which for a 40 foot boat is really, really nice. I'm gonna get in here and show you how much space there's in here. So, you know, I hope you can see me okay, but there's plenty of room to move around in. Um, they've frosted out the windows here, but, you know, we're all sailors. Just have it clear, allow more light, and there is an opening hatch there for ventilation and steam. Nice sink. You know, it does exactly what it says it does on the tin, so to speak. So, nothing there. Nice. Right. 
U-shape settee on the starboard side. There is plenty of light before we go too further forward. So you have those nice port light windows there up on your saloon roof. You have the windows there and then there are those two opening hatches up above. So plenty of light. This table, it's a shame they've put stuff on it, but that folds out and then drops down. So you can have a large double berth there or something like that if you wish. It's really nice. The cushions, hey, for a production boat, the cushions are really, really nice and soft. Nice material on them. There is storage behind, and then um, you have a mains plug there. Table folds out, so you have seating um, here and all the way around. Oh, it's just really nice. I love the chaise long, somewhere to lounge out in, your mask compression post, and then to my left on the port side, you have your galley. So the other side of the island, there is a nice pull-out drawer. Dual stainless steel seat. You have enough room here. If you haven't seen it, look at the video. I'll leave a link for that up the corner there. And they have a really nice um, sink system. And I would actually ask for it to be optioned out with that. That's just my choice. Um, this is only fresh water, hot and cold, but it can be optioned with salt water if you wish. And then bin and so on underneath. And it's a top loading and bottom loading fridge. So you have access down below. So you don't have to go rummaging through everything to find what you need. And then some nice handy baskets and so on up the top to arrange your fridge. You know, you can comfortably go away for a week or two on this boat, maybe th further if you want to. And then storage, I don't know, for putting stuff, whatever you want to put along there. Uh, your boat, two gimbaled, two burner gimbal stove. Your gas shut off is down underneath and there's a space for pot and pans. And then just to the right of the cooker and another top loading section. Now, this can be optioned out as a cool box or, you know, another sort of fridge or freezer if you want. That's probably what I would do because then at least you can have, you're not forced to go to a marina or a mooring ball and find a restaurant. You know, you can extend your cruising a little bit more. And then a handy, that's actually, it's in the right spot, the boat for the cutlery. Okay, it's a bit of a pain. You've got to open it over the work surface, but it doesn't matter what tack you're on. I was on a quite a prestigious boat a little while ago. I'll leave a link for it up here. And when we were test sailing and underway, the cutlery drawer kept flying open and cutlery going everywhere. And it's a brand new boat, shouldn't happen. But anyway, I'll leave a link for that. And then there is, I don't know, you put some stuff, whatever stuff you want. And I'm sure you have a cupboard here and I'm pretty sure this can be optioned out with a microwave. Don't quote me on that, but I think it can be. It was quite a nice little library area, isn't it? You know? And then forward, you have your owner's suite. And I like, it's been done before in the past. A lot of people stopped doing it. I don't know why, um, but I really like this as actually having an offset double. A lot of people prefer an island berth. If you've ever been in some sort of sea with no lee cloths, you just get thrown off it. At least with this bed, you are held in either side. So it doesn't matter what tack you're on, um, you've got something to lean against, which is really, really handy. It's a big double, you know? What more do you want? Really nice storage area down on the port side with a mains plug and USB charging. And there's privacy slide blinds um, uh, for your port lights. There is storage forward port lights there. You have an opening hatch in your cabin for ventilation and you know more plugs, USB charging. Behind the door you have um, a cupboard. 
hanging cupboard. I'm sorry the light's not very good in there and a very small storage area down below. There is storage underneath the bed and obviously you have access to bilges and so on down below. And it is a wet heads, but they've separated like a lot of the boat manufacturers are doing now. Um, see if I can find, there we go, light switch for you. So this is actually a manual flush head. I would have this as my fresh water heads and then the day heads as a manual salt water. So at least, you know, the odors are kept out of your cabin. It's the option I would choose. Obviously sink, but it's a wet heads, but it's not because if you see here, you have a plexiglass shield here and then just by the toilet, the heads, there's another section here and that comes across, locks off. And once, obviously, once you're in and you close this door, you have this whole area as a shower area. So it saves all that over there getting wet. It's a neat solution. A lot of the manufacturers are doing sort of stuff like that. They've listened to boat owners and cruisers, um, ventilation there and dealt with it, dealt with the situation because none of us like wet heads. I'll set myself up on this chaise long. It's lovely. Who's this boat for? Uh, we'll have a look at the uh, mechanical department. So I haven't forgotten that. If you're a couple, you know, you've had a smaller boat um, before and you're wanting to upgrade, you have a small family or you want to take your friends, you can have this as a two cabin version too, if you wish, which would be really smart. It's for you, you know, or maybe you're an older couple and you're downsizing, but you don't want to give up sailing and you want something just to do a bit of coastal cruising, something like that. This is, it's a really nice option. Once again, Jano are, they're changing the game um, with these production boats and they're doing a really, really good job at it. So let's go to have a look at the engine space, your mechanical spot. And before I forget, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below um, and we can address any issues. And then when we're at La Rochelle or at the Cam Boat Show, we can then go back around the boat and, you know, address your questions. It's quite dark in there, but Yanmar engine, you have access from the cabins on both sides to get to your seawater strainer. Um, dipstick, oil filters, alternator, all that sort of stuff. So, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.